We've been talking a lot about firefighters. Uh, we've had, of course, all those wildfires up in the, our high country and the remote areas, but also right here in town, there's been some very big fires. Yeah, here in Phoenix, there is an entire museum dedicated to firefighters, and it's called the Hall of Flame, and that's where uh, Desiree is live for us this morning. I love this place, Des. It's so interesting, right? I mean, they've got uh, equipment going all the way back to the 1700s. I mean, this place is incredible. We've been walking around and we've had the pleasure to do that for about a half hour now. It, it's just awesome, the stuff that's in here. Uh, but today we're here because it is the eighth, a very somber anniversary of the Yarnell Hill fire and the 19 individuals who lost their lives in the fire that day. Uh, so we are here talking about uh, what happened that day back in 2013. And as we walk around and show you some of the things that they have in here, they actually have a truck from uh, that day from the Granite Mountain Hotshots uh, fire. And um, it, it's just incredible everything you have in here. You're the world's largest firefighting museum. That's so impressive, Mark. We're pretty big and we're right here in Phoenix. We w wish more people knew about us. Absolutely. I hope they come and visit after seeing us uh, this morning. But uh, just take us back to 2013. Tell us uh, what happened. Well, it was a, a really terrible day for us and I think for the whole country, but really for uh, people here in Arizona, maybe especially. Uh, that was the day when 19 of 20 young men who belonged to the Granite Mountain Hot Shots, which was a hot shot crew out of uh, the Prescott, Arizona Fire Department, uh, lost their lives in a situation that unfortunately has been seen before in wildland firefighting throughout the years. Well, Man Gulch Fire in 1949, the South Canyon Fire in Colorado mm -hmm. in, uh, 19, in the early 90s. Uh, where you had some, uh, which, what a lot of times they call overcommitting. They, they got in a little too close to the fire, the wind changed and a cold front started pushing the fire back toward them and their escape routes were uphill. Mm -hmm. And so it was uh, something that was, uh, they simply couldn't outrun the fire and they lost their race. One young man uh, did survive. He had been posted as a lookout and he was mm -hmm. some distance away but he might very well have died himself, except that somebody from another crew came by in a pickup truck and was able to give him a lift out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he was the one survivor out of, out of uh, in the 19 out of 20 didn't make it, unfortunately. Yeah, and you were, uh, I was being told that um, it was like each day someone got a day off, so he just happened to be the safety command officer right. uh, that day, and things just had changed too quickly. Yeah, he, he was the one who was kind of placed uh, some distance away to keep an eye out and uh, but he, uh, he was in a very dangerous situation also mm -hmm. uh, as i said somebody came by from another crew and said hey you gotta go wow and he did yeah so tell us about this truck this is so special there's only two museums uh in in the country that have that's correct. one of these vehicles one is the, in la and the other is right here yeah this was there was two of them that's right uh this is 7a the 7b is at the county fire museum in bellflower in los angeles uh, County Fire Museum of Los Angeles, and these were transports. They were tra they call them transport buggies, and they carried those young men on that day and on many many other calls all over the Western United States, uh, not just Arizona but New Mexico and Nevada and California, mm -hmm. and uh, they are real. You know, they're just well equipped big pieces. Uh, after the disaster, after they they died, the program was abandoned by Prescott. They didn't re staff it. Mm -hmm. And so these sat in storage in a city garage in Prescott for years. They were taken out to be in the movie, Only the Brave, that was made about it. And then they were put back and they sat alone for a while longer. And they finally, uh, they were going to be sold as surplus city property. Well, the County Fire Museum uh, purchased them and one of them went there to be displayed there and one uh, has stayed with us. Uh, now for quite a few years, and, and we expect it to be with us for many, many more years. Uh, so it's something we're very, very proud to display. This is the only vehicle, you know, we're kind of old school here at the Hall of Flame. This yes, is the you are, and it's incredible. Yeah, well, we, we love that, but this is the only 21st century vehicle we have. Wow. We go all the way back to the 1700s in some cases, but people love to come in and look at those vintage trucks from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s that we have here, and I, we love them. Uh, 
so we're you know we're kind of slow to come into the modern era but this is an exception this is a, a oh yeah it has a, such special meaning it, uh, the most firefighters that we've lost in a fire you said since 9 11. yeah right? it, it was the most it was the biggest loss of american okay. firefighters since 9 11. Okay. it was the biggest loss of wildland firefighters since 1933 the griffith park fire in los angeles wow okay uh, we got to wrap a little bit ago um so just okay. tell folks when they can come sure. and visit you guys and take a look at the truck and learn more about what happened we'd love you to come down Tuesday through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's our hours. We're closed to the public Sundays and Mondays. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Mark. So incredible. And again, you guys, this is the eighth very somber anniversary. And every five years, this heads back to northern Arizona for a ceremony there that honors um, everyone who lost their lives that day. I will send it back to you. Yeah, I had the opportunity to get out there. There's a, a fundraiser being held out there and, and get up close to that truck and there are other trucks there. So I highly recommend that because it's so educational. That's another thing you can do with the kids yeah. inside where it's not, you know, so hot outside. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, boy, I, I'll never forget that day when yeah. we found out that it happened.